Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to the somewhat unusual idea of bacterial communication. Or basically, how some of the smallest organisms on the planet are able to communicate, cooperate, for reasons that are still not understood. And all of this is actually based on some of the recent and somewhat unusual discoveries from various studies you can find in the description. But here I actually wanted to start with something else first that was just released a few days back. A study that investigated this, cyanobacteria, basically one of the oldest organisms on the entire planet, representing one of the largest and one of the most significant groups of any bacteria on Earth. Mostly because they play a huge role in maintaining oceans and of course producing oxygen for the atmosphere, and because over time they actually maintain a lot of different balances to make our planet habitable. And here, in one of the recent studies you can find in the description, researchers basically wanted to understand one thing. How can cyanobacteria, which are basically single-cell organisms, create these somewhat complex filaments that eventually produce very large colonies we normally refer to as biomats? Biomats that can grow in size and cover very large areas of open water, in many cases containing billions of specimens, all joined together as a single organism something that can easily form in mere hours, and something that resembles a kind of a slimy formation that in reality is made out of tiny filaments weaved together into a single biomat. In other words, how can a single organism, an organism that's usually just a bacteria living by itself, produce a much more complex shape with various geometric formations and various patterns? And from what the scientists understand so far, it seems to involve some kind of a natural communication process that's still actually very poorly understood, that results in automatic assembly and very complex shapes that seem to follow a somewhat complex mathematical formula. And so once you get enough cyanobacteria in a single volume of water, if they actually come close enough together, they start to interact, start to form filaments, and eventually produce biomats. And it seems to happen every single time following very similar principles. And turns out that when they actually do form this, it makes these cyanobacteria much more successful. It provides a lot of stability, protection, in some sense safety in numbers, but more importantly, allows them to withstand somewhat difficult conditions in the oceans, and even helps them respond to various changes in the water level, various currents, and makes them a lot more resilient, even in difficult conditions. So basically here, by creating these communities, they essentially become much more successful. Yet the oceans contain a lot of other bacteria, and some bacteria are even more populous and are technically even more important for the production of nutrients and for the production of oxygen. As a matter of fact, this seems to be the most prominent species and the most abundant bacteria in all of the oceans on Earth. This is known as Prochlorococcus, specifically Prochlorococcus marinus, which represents the most significant marine cyanobacterium, or the most important bacterium that's able to photosynthesize and produce oxygen on the entire planet. Yet it's also the smallest photosynthetic organism that contains a relatively small genome. And so the scientists have always believed that these are really simple bacteria, just a single cell bacteria, possibly representing some of the first life on the planet that very likely just did not evolve much yet and was unable to produce complex structures and just survived by being alone. But it's actually so successful that it seems to produce up to 20% of all oxygen, implying that this is also one of the most numerous bacteria on the entire planet. Possibly the most numerous. But it was always believed to be sort of primitive. Primitive and solitary, basically living completely by themselves. Yet in the last decade or so, since 2011, researchers started to discover something else about this bacterium that at first didn't make much sense. In many cases, completely by accident, when the scientists tried to image this bacterium, or basically tried to take their picture, they were very often joined to someone else, and usually through some kind of an unusual bridge. And though at first this was believed to be maybe some kind of a fluke, or just some kind of an image artifact, the more scientists looked, the more of these unusual bridges they kept discovering. Which eventually led biologists to speculate that this is some kind of a structure they're producing, maybe as a means of material transfer. And eventually these became known as bacterial nanotubes. Structures that surprisingly turn out to be made out of cell membrane as opposed to some kind of a protein. And structures that scientists realized do actually transfer a lot of stuff. So these were basically kind of like tunnels. Now seeing these unusual tunnels or structures around bacteria is not really that unusual because some bacteria do actually share genes this way, 
but in this case this appeared to be very frequent and in many cases resulted in somewhat complex colony-like formations where several bacteria often joined together and basically coexisted as a group instead of being alone. And that's something scientists have never seen before. And so for several years, various biologists tried to figure out exactly what's happening here. And one of the first propositions suggested that this is maybe what bacteria do when they die. Apparently, a lot of dead bacteria seem to contain these structures at the end. And so one of the first explanations was that maybe this is something that happens to cells right after the bacterial death. Basically, the cell bursts and creates these nanotubes. But further studies did something slightly different. They actually used fluorescent proteins to see if anything from one bacterium goes into its partners. And it did. A lot of proteins were actually shared between bacteria containing these tubes. And in many cases, they were basically sharing almost everything. They were sharing amino acids, they were sharing various proteins and a lot of nutrients, and in some cases even toxins. And so this was something researchers have never seen before, and something that was extremely different from previous observations, such as for example of pili that can be used to transfer DNA. But the strangest discovery was made in one of the recent studies, the study by Eliso Angula Canovas and her team, where the scientists discovered that this seems to work between species as well. Or in other words, it linked microbes of different species such as, for example, the famous E. coli that was sharing materials with the cyanobacterium. And so in some sense, what the scientists have just discovered seems to be the completely new way for bacteria to communicate. Which should not really come as a surprise because they do communicate in so many other ways. As a matter of fact, bacterial communication is an extremely diverse field. For example, many bacteria are able to grow pili, hair-like structures of protein that are used to transfer DNA and in some sense almost represent a basic sexual interaction between bacteria. At the same time, pili can also be used to form biofilm. And bacterial biofilm, that you can learn about in one of the previous videos in the description, is essentially like a bacterial city. It involves very complex communication, very complex structures, and in many cases, protects bacterium from everything on the outside. This is basically how many bacteria survive in super hostile environments, such as for example various volcanic springs, or how they survive in your mouth, eventually giving you cavities. So yeah, even right now, you and I will have a lot of biofilm right here. We also know bacteria very often communicate or interact by creating various vesicles, or essentially these tiny bubbles formed inside the cell, that very often separate from the cell and float around until something else catches them. In many cases, they'll actually contain various types of genetic information and sometimes a lot of proteins and a lot of nutrients. Now, we obviously have no idea why bacteria do this, but basically by being somewhat altruistic in this case, and by sharing all of this with their partners, it seems to help them somehow. But it looks like now we've discovered something entirely new. An entirely new structure and an entirely new way to communicate that actually seems to be more permanent. Because in this case, these tubes don't actually fall apart right away and seem to even create more complex structures over time. And more importantly, when they were observing Prochlorococcus cells, they discovered that it was also connected to another bacterium known as Cynecococcus, an entirely different, more complex species that, though not as numerous and not as successful, did actually contain more complex DNA and potentially contain nutrients beneficial for the simpler species. In other words, what the scientists might have discovered here is a kind of a bacterial trade network, a very bizarre community consisting of different organisms connected together physically through these nanotube tunnels. With one of the potential explanations here being that this is actually a very efficient way to share everything. Way more efficient than vesicles, which can be lost or potentially fall apart completely, and not as complex or not as taxing as producing a biofilm. So basically this is maybe something in between. Here it still provides a bit of structural support and allows these cells to share everything, and more importantly, for the simpler bacterium in this case, it allows them to receive proteins they would not be able to make themselves. Or at least that's the assumption for now. In reality, this is actually one of the future questions. What exactly are they sharing and why exactly do they form these structures or what signals they use to connect to one another? Now, this is going to be revealed in some of the new experiments. For now, this is still a mystery. But by discovering these nanotubes in literally the most abundant photosynthetic organism on the planet presents us with a very important question. The question being, can we even call these bacteria single-celled? and are basically all bacteria technically multicellular organisms.
or at least communal organisms, able to connect to one another and able to share everything when they need to. So basically here, even a bacterium with a relatively small genome that might require something for its survival can actually still receive everything as long as they connect to someone with more complexity. And that by itself raises so many questions. The questions of why, how, and more importantly the questions of how does it influence the production of, for example, oxygen when the bacteria join together and when they start forming these large structures. Because right now it looks like this only happens in approximately 5% of cases, but that's just based on initial observations. For all we know this is super common in the oceans, and maybe this is really the best way for bacteria to survive. But at least for now, other than the actual discovery, we don't really know much else. We know that a lot of bacteria seem to form these bridges, and they seem to share a lot of stuff in them, so this is something that's probably very common in most bacteria, if not all bacteria, but everything else is going to be a mystery. And so once we discover something else, we'll come back and talk about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.